let me get her torn apart and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so I think as you can see, she has been thoroughly disemboweled. Um, is a one solder joint that needs to be uh, unsoldered to get the main board out of the radio. Once you get it split, lots of lots of screws. <laughs> Once you get, but to get the back plate out, which has the circuit board screwed to it, you have to desolder the antenna connector. So you can see uh, how well it shows up. Everything's shiny, <laughs> but the terminal is bent up at 90 degrees and passes through the circuit board right here. So you do have to desolder that one connection. Other than that, you just have to take out all of the screws, which there are a lot of them. Um, and you do have to take all of the nuts right there off of the top. And then I'd taken the two screws out of this. I didn't actually need to do that because I don't need to remove the SMA connector. Um, like I said, I just ended up having to uh, desolder that connection. But uh, like I say, once you get that out, then you can take all the screws out that hold the circuit board down to this plate. Um, do need to take the heat sink off of the final transistor, or actually MOSFET, right there. That little cover has two screws go down through it. And then the other side goes down and actually makes contact with this. This is a nice heavy die cast piece of metal here. So this is kind of like the inner interface between the front of the radio and the battery pack. Um, but this act, acts as your uh, heat sink. Um, and as you can see, everything is gasketed, you know, for weather resistance. Um, gaskets around everything here. Gaskets, you know, that piece, once you get this board reinstalled on here, that gasket assembly goes down on top. Um, the battery pack connector where it's screwed on here to the terminals for the battery connector. Um, again, gasketed. Everything's got gaskets on it. Gaskets, gaskets, gaskets. <laughs> um, the... Uh, Final here is I got to hold it up here to look at the darn thing. It is a Rano. Remember, it was a Renesis. It's a RQA0011. Uh, that's an N channel MOSFET. And like I say, that's rated power is like 10, I think it was like 10.2 uh, dBm. So that's going to be over 10 watts. Um, the main brain basically of this entire thing, oh, one last thing on this side of the board. There is a battery, so, you know, at some point in the future, um, that is something that may need to be replaced, that battery. Um, but you don't have to remove this board to do that. This is on the side that once you get this, you know, this assembly separated from this, you can see the battery. So that would be replaceable without actually having to completely pull the circuit board. And I'm sure that's going to, that, that little battery there would last for years. They usually do. They, these uh, don't really require much, much uh, idle current. Um, but the, uh, the main brain of this unit is this quad flat pack right here. And actually that chip can be had in like four different conf configurations. It can be had in, uh, you know, like BGA style, like I say, this one here, they're using a the quad flat pack. Um, and that is a Kinetics uh, 512K flash, so it's a 120 megahertz ARM Cortex M4 based microcontroller with a FPU. So like I say, that's, that's what does all the magic in this little guy. Um, does have an, a uh, flash memory right there, that's actually with that IC that's right up above from that. That's a uh, wind bond uh, 128 meg bit uh, serial flash memory with a uh, dual quad SPI and uh, QPI. But uh, yeah, really nice radio. The layout's nice. Construction, um, I mean, they really did a good job on this. And my understanding, um, of course, Redivus didn't tell me this. I saw this online, but apparently. Um, this is theirs. You know, this is not a rebranded radio. Um, this HD1 radio was, the, you know, R&D was done by them, manufacturing a whole lot nine yards. So, you know, they built this thing from the ground up, basically. Um, a lot of times with a lot of this style radio, you'll see the same radio from like five different manufacturers, just a different name on the front of it. Um, like I say, Redivis is actually, they designed this thing from the ground up. So, you know, this isn't, they didn't, it's not a rebranded radio that they're selling there. You know, they may rebrand, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, they're the actual designers of this radio. I'd have to give them a big thumbs up. They did a good job. Um, the uh, control here, I can't find a manufacturer's mark on this on this control, this uh, rotary encoder, 
But uh, this one here is a LJV. It's a Chinese company. Um, they make rotary encoders and volume controls like this and whatnot. But uh, I've seen these in a lot of other radios, and they seem to be very good quality. Um, actually wanted to get some stuff from them one time, unfortunately, you know, directly from that company, LJV. And, yeah, unfortunately, their minimum quantities are rather huge. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, there you go. Give you a little bit of close-up here. You can have a look-see at it. You can see pretty much everything is really, there's, there is one trimmer resistor on the other side of the board. Other than that, yeah, you can see there's no alignment you're going to do on this. All the, all the alignment is done through the uh, processor. Um, uses all fixed inductors, you know, and uh, transformers. So... It's like actually like a lot of the president radios, you know, they're they're a lot of radios are starting to switch over to that uh, alignment through programming that's done at the factory. But uh, yeah, like I say, I'd have to give this this radio a big thumbs up. They did a nice job of design. The layout's really nice and clean. Um, construction, man, I mean, just this piece. This is this is a large portion of the weight of this radio is this interface. You know, between this and the battery pack. Um, you know, that board and actually this don't have, I mean, this has a good bit of weight. And even, you know, with the structure taken, you know, with this metal structure taken out of this, this piece here is still nice and heavy. I mean, this thing got some heft to it. Um, actually, I'm just looking here. That must be the GPS antenna, I'm assuming, right there. Yeah, that's probably the GPS antenna, because that comes down right here to this board. And that is, like I say, that's the GPS module. That's just a little window for the, the light there. The LED should be on this board then. Uh, where is the little guy? Yeah, so... Yeah, flat flex cables. Uh, just be careful if you ever take something like this apart. Be careful with these things. Don't <laughs> don't break them or the, uh, the the trays that they go into. But uh, yeah, like I say, I just man, stir there's just there's no flex in this thing, man. It's really really nice. Like I say, good good job. <laughs> it's it's nice to see. Uh, quality starting to increase but like i say quality comes at a price you know that's why this thing is not cheap just if you just add up the parts prices here a lot of these parts these aren't cheap um the processors and whatnot you know it's not like they're little five cent parts you know, like a lot of the the majority of the passive components on here so yep i have to give this radio a big thumbs up now the whole trick um for me is i have to get this uh completely put back together and see if it works again. <laughs> That's always the challenge. Yeah, like I say, this is actually fairly easy. A lot of screws, but yeah, other than that, one solder connection. So once take one solder connection off, pop the two ribbon cables, the flat flex cables out um, that interface between the front of the radio and the main board. So let me get her stuck back together and fire it back up and uh, see if she still works. <laughs> 